Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. Um, I'll, I'll actually probably moment by the time my statement is done and my question is asked, I'll let you finish an earlier thought that you were having there. Uh, I saw that you took a trip to highlight the infrastructure projects related to truck parking. One project you visited was 10 additional spots, which is helpful, although the money can, uh, came from the, uh, our infrastructure funds. In addition, your department uh, announced 86 new grants last week, and those 86 grants, only four even mentioned truck parking, and they have it and they have to do with IT systems at the truck stops. Now, my question is based on the information that I've just given. You, you've created zero additional truck parking locations, even with the record amount of money that was given to you in the infrastructure bill that we passed. You haven't done anything to, uh, substantial to expand new truck parking locations so the problem still exists. What do you plan to do about fixing the problem instead of ever just continuing to talk about it? Uh, well, again, we are funding projects that are both increasing the physical availability of parking, uh, truck parking by adding truck parking spaces and helping to optimize the parking that's there. So when you hear about an IT-oriented project, what we're trying to do is uh, correct the fact that in addition to there just plain not being enough spaces out there, which is certainly a problem that won't be solved by, by 10 spots here or 12 spots there, uh, that we're also giving truck drivers better access to insights about where the spaces are going to be. What we hear a lot when I'm talking to drivers is they'll be, uh, they'll be over the road, they'll have a look at their electronic logging device, they know they're coming into that last hour. And now they're faced with the choice of either uh, uh, giving up income and not going as far as they feel they ought to or, or even as far as their employer expects them to because they know there might be a space. Or pressing forward, taking a bit of a gamble on whether there's going to be a space nearer to where they'll be when, when they time out. Uh, and so if they have more reliable information, and uh, a number of states, Florida's DOT is one that's working on this, um, uh, and I think Tennessee's done some work on this too. Uh, if they can provide better information, could be a relatively low-tech solution like a webcam, could be something a little more sophisticated, giving them a, 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 a live tracking update, uh, they can get better certainty there. It's about recognizing that we're not going to address the physical side overnight, even though we're, we're working hard to do that. I'm trying to balance that with optimizing what's there and adding to what's there. I understand that. I've been in the trucking business all my life. And I can tell you that the problem really is not enough spaces available. I want to switch gears if I can. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Secretary, you were made aware uh, in November 2021 um, by um, Marad that issued a decision that they would allow foreign companies to enter into our long-term uh, charter agreement with the domestic vessels for the purpose of operating commercial inland river cruises. Marriott reaffirmed the decision in March of 2022 under the premise that the domestic companies would continue to own and operate the vessels under the charter. That vessel is operating on the Mississippi River today. Unfortunately, in reaching this decision, Marriott inappropriately chose to apply existing time charter rules for fishing vessels operating in foreign waters to the inland passage service fleet. This misguided decision ignores the foreign company actually controls the vessel. From selling tickets through the website to seeing the port of some call, all while the profits are sent overseas. In addition, the hospitality crews would be supplied by the foreign companies, which I believe significantly in, in, it causes a safety issue. This action raises some significant concerns with the Jones Act communi uh, com community and has a real possibility of extending well beyond passenger cruises to in all inland operations that utilize long-term charters. What, do you, what can you tell us about this decision and whether your office is going to take a closer look? For an, for an administration that supports the Jones Act, this was a highly troubling decision. Well, as you noted, we support the Jones Act and uh, Marad uh, always works to the best of their ability and judgment to apply the law as written. Uh, I uh, welcome your invitation to pay closer attention to this specific matter, especially if, if there's a concern in your view uh, that it is either not playing out as expected or that there's a discrepancy in terms of uh, viewpoints on how that conforms to, to the legislative guidance that Marad has, and uh, would welcome the chance to follow up with your office. For and, and, and I would wish that you would do that because the, the reality is, is that the Jones Act is in place for a reason. Mm. That's to keep foreign enemies from working inland 